What's up, everybody? My name is Harrison Kramer. My name is Jake Chandler. And you are watching The Bottom Line, where life's inconsistencies are met with foundational truth. This is a weekly podcast that Jake and I do, and we, we discuss a different biblical topic every week and um, share our experiences and how we are pursuing God within our own lives and just sharing it with you in hopes that you guys can relate to it and that it can somehow be helpful for you. And today, our topic is a good one. A good one? Yeah. Well, the topic itself is a bad one. It's probably not very good. But it's but an it's important a good, one. It's a good discussion. So on this show, we have talked about pride. Yes. And we've talked about worship. Yes. Today, we're talking about when pride and worship meet and have a baby. A little evil baby. <laughs> yeah, not a good baby. We're talking about idolatry. So, right off the bat, what is, what is this thing? What is idolatry? It's a, it's a combination yeah. of worship and pride. Well, what is that? It's it's a few things that that all can be summed up together in worship mixed with pride, I think. But the Bible talks about idolatry in a couple different ways. Like for instance, the Old Testament's view of idolatry, at least from what I can understand from my reading of the Old Testament, is that it was actual literal worship and bowing before like physical statues or wooden statues or something like that. Right. Because the people believe that if you carve, you know, an image of a, an animal or a person, that a god would actually, like, possess that statue and you could worship it and it would listen, which is not true. <laughs> says that in 1 Corinthians 8, verse 4. I'm blinded by this bright light. We know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and there is no God but one. So right off the bat, well, not right off the bat, several hundred years later, <laughs> Paul right, is right. saying that these idols are nothing but Thousand, statues. Maybe thousands of years later. Yeah, I don't know my date. <laughs> no. But anyways. Yeah. So there's there's that view of idols, which a lot of people might think is outdated, but... Uh, yes, there, there are still, I believe there are still certain cultures and religions where it might look like that. Yeah, yeah. I think so. And then in the New Testament, um, idolatry is described a bit more, uh, with what we might associate it with in America as, as coveting or mm. wanting something more than you want God, essentially. Um, Colossians 3 verse 5 and 6 says put to death therefore what is earthly in you sexual immorality impurity passion evil desire and covetous covetousness which is idolatry which is idolatry <laughs> on account of these the wrath of God is coming so so he's saying that an unhealthy desire or need for something that's not God an, like unhealthy as in you put that thing above your desire for God mm -hmm. is idolatry, just as much as bowing before an empty statue. Yeah. So throughout the course of history, idolatry has taken many forms. Yes. But at its core, it is the same. Mm -hmm. It is taking something and putting it in the place of God, exactly like you yeah. said. And... uh we we just read a couple verses that are actually pretty hardcore. Yeah. Like, put to death whatever is earthly in you. Mm -hmm. And um, just the, the wickedness of the heart and the desires of the heart to remove God from his place and put something else there instead. Mm -hmm. Not literally, you can't do that, but in your life, you can. And that that has been happening that that's how the world fell mm. was man idolizing the the potential for their own wisdom over God's wisdom. Yeah. And it, it, it like 
it ga- it gives way to like a false understanding of peace, I think, and and rest. Like if you if you find your most rest in YouTube, then that's an idol. If you mm. find more rest in YouTube or in Netflix than you do in the Word of God, that's an idol. Right. And it's bad. Yeah. That leads perfectly into the next question, which is what types of things does idolatry consist of? You you touched on some Old Testament things where they would literally bow down to these statues of kings mm. or these statues of actual demon gods, Baal, Molech, and, or um, a, a statue of a golden calf or yeah. whatever. But idolatry has never left. And so for us today, what what does idolatry consist of? And you hit one of them right on the head with YouTube, like entertainment and social media in general. Yeah. I think is something that people need to recognize as an idol more than more than we do. Mm-hmm. I think I don't think like countless things can be idols. Anything can be an idol for yeah. somebody. Like it it all depends really on on who you are as a person. Mm-hmm. Like good things can become idols. Yes. Yes. Spending like if you YouTube isn't inherently bad. Yeah. This video is on YouTube. Oh, <laughs> uh, true. Hit that subscribe button. Like, subscribe, <laughs> comment below, you know. Yeah. But if you if you can't find rest without going out to eat with your friends every night of the week, if that's the only way you can be satisfied in life, that's not a good thing. Like if if all your attention is put into these things that are good and Mm -hmm. healthy, they can become idols and unhealthy. Yeah. Because what what types of things can become idols or what types of things are idols? What you said. Pretty much anything has the potential to become an idol, even if it's not a bad thing. Um, what, What you decide to put your hope in and what you rely on to give you that rest and to make you happy and give you joy over God. Because there there are a lot of, God should be the main one who gives us rest. And then there are a lot of secondary things mm. that can complement that. There are a lot of secondary things that can make us happy. Yeah. But if that is the basis, it's not good. Mm-hmm. It, it's not only forbidden, but it's unreliable. Mm-hmm. Hence why we call this the bottom line. This comes up almost every episode because the idea of having a firm foundation is something that everybody needs to wrestle with. Yeah, You need to wrestle with if what you are current re- currently relying on is going to last for eternity. And if the answer is no, then you need something else. Right. And there's only one thing or one person who can be the firm foundation. Who? Jesus. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. I had to I had to do it to him. Um yeah, so many many things can be idols. It can be your favorite sports team. Mm-hmm. It can be your family. It can be video games, movies. Um I know in my life let, let me just be real. It was the MCU. The movie franchise was literally an idol in my life because I it was what I ran to. Like, it, it was what I was most interested in, what sparked the most curiosity within me. And it was, it was something that I relied on and something I found community in, which can be a good thing but the the way that things just take the place of God ends up being destructive and will bring you anxiety which makes you think that you need to rely on it more when in reality you need to get away from it mm-hmm. and that that's the other interesting thing is that people 
rely on something or rely on a habit or rely on an idol because they keep getting anxious, but they don't know that that idol is making you anxious yeah. because it's not giving you the rest. It can't give you the rest. It's not capable. It doesn't care about you. Yeah, it can't. Like, let's be real. It doesn't love you. Yeah. It's not God. There's Yeah, there's nothing for you there. Yeah. Do you have anything else? Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hop in with a verse. All right. A few verses. Like a rap verse? Yeah, I'm gonna drop a freestyle. Okay. I'm not gonna do okay. that. <laughs> Psalm 115, verse four through eight. So I, I have to apologize for that joke. <laughs> it's terrible. Psalm Anyways. 115, four through eight. But their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but cannot walk, nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a psalm. It's, it's like a poetic verse. But I, I take that. I read that and I think what we've just been describing. If you run to this empty thing to try and fill yourself up you're just going to be empty yourself Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you kind of become like the thing right yeah that's very interesting and we're going to talk about the polar opposite of that what you do take after what you obey right and if you are taking after something that is empty you're going to be empty. Right. And that's just how it goes. If you take after God, you're going to have what he has to offer, which is eternal life, fruits of the spirit, things that that don't fade and that don't mm. that don't leave a void in one's heart. Um that w- that was all for the question of what types of things are idols. Do you have yeah. any other thoughts? No. Okay. A lot of things are idols. We could the list goes on and on. It can be money. It can be a relationship with your girlfriend or boyfriend. It can be it can be music. Yeah. Like I've seen people so passionate about what they do and so passionate about what they create and it's so cool. But it's a bummer that they they need that to be their fix and it's not consistent. Yeah. You know, their inspiration isn't consistent the what people think about it isn't consistent and it's it's something that everyone needs to just watch out for the the next thing i want to talk about comes from a verse in galatians chapter 4 it's verse 8 and it says formerly when you did not know god you were slaves to those who by nature are not gods i feel like that kind of relates to what the psalm that you just read yeah you You were slaves to those who by nature are not gods. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? No, I think we kind of, kind of touched on that part. Yeah. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then Jesus says in John 8, 34, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. Mm. So (laughs) if you have ever sinned in your life, show of hands. Not you. Oh, Oh, sorry. I I couldn't. There we go. You're a slave to sin. Yeah. And um, the why I bring this up is because it's important to know that there there is a power behind your idol. Mm Mm-hmm. And if it's not Jesus, it's the devil. And there, there is absolutely no in between. Right. You are either serving Christ or you are serving Satan. And you can't be 75% Christ, 25% Satan. It's like 100% either or. One of my favorite things my grandpa used to say, I might have said this before, but it's it's really good, so I'll say it again. If you are sitting on the fence between Jesus and the devil 
you're with the devil because the devil owns the fence. Mm-hmm. That's his property. And um, that that's why idolatry is taken so seriously in the Bible. That's why it's talking about putting the old self to death. That's why it's saying God's wrath hangs over um, those who are committed to idolatry and fall into that is because there is, there's a power behind idolatry. And if it's not Christ, it is the enemy. And that that's that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what else I got. And um, just like the, the psalm you read before, you, you end up acting, your life reflects what your idol is. Mm-hmm. And your characteristics can begin to look yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. I think about um, like back in middle school or early high school when a bunch of my friends would always play like Call of Duty or something. That's all we would do. And I'd start yeah. to see like violence like start to kind of show up in just like how we hung out with each other. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because like that's all we did. That's we'd we'd go over to each other's house. We'd play Call of Duty or Modern Warfare or whatever you want to play for like hours and hours and hours. <laughs> yep. And when that's all you're filling your mind <laughs> with, that's what's going to start to affect your behavior. Yeah. 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 That that's good. There. There are probably many examples just like that, like people bonding over their favorite sports team or bonding over their favorite movies or whatever. Um, All things that could be a good thing, but if they're at the core of you and the core of your community, it's, it's going to show up somehow. Yeah. And uh, we, we've been talking a lot about how idolatry is, is bad, right? Yeah. Clearly. But we we'd be lying if we said it wasn't appealing, mm-hmm. you know. So why why is idolatry this thing where you're literally putting something else, whatever it may be, in the place of God? Why is this appealing to us? Yeah, um, I think because it's it's on our own terms. Whether we well, it might not be on our own terms, but it. it comes across as on our own terms like we kind of deceive ourselves into thinking that we've got it under control and that we can handle it sort of thing it's not really an obsession right and that we can kind of make our way through that um and it's it's like instant because yeah it's 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 not long lasting and it's not sustaining, but it is like it's temporary gratification that mm-hmm. can help in the moment, but it's not gonna help in the long run. So we're impatient. Yeah. Wanna want it want help fast. Yeah. Right. Um, I like what you said about it gives us a sense of control. Yeah. And I want to I wanna talk about that specifically for a little bit because it's not a real sense of control. Right. L- like we just said, you're either following the devil or you're following Christ. Mm-hmm. And how these verses are exposing the fact that you take after your idol. And so the, the, I, the one of the biggest ironies of mankind is their desire to be independent, yet in doing so, falling completely in sync with demons. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, you you get so invested in an idol, and you get so much of your identity from it, but when you lay your head down at night, you, you've got to know, like, right, you've got to know that you did things that you didn't really want to do and that you're living in ways you don't really want to live because you don't really have control. This thing is kind of, it's like going to end up controlling you. Right. And so that's why, um, people, 
can get, I really don't know how to say this. People can get so defensive about certain things. If you, if you idolize, let's say a movie, that's just the only yeah. thing. That comes. If you idolize that and people, people get defensive about that, they get, they get anxious about that. And that is because this thing is starting to control you. Right. You are not independent like you think you mm-hmm. are. True freedom comes through Christ. Yeah. And people people look at Christianity and look at Christ as if it's a ball and chain. He's cutting the ball and chain off. But people don't think that they're a slave to sin. Right. So when Christ said that, it made people want to kill him. Yeah. He was saying the truth. You and I were once slaves to sin. But now now we're free. But we'd be fooling ourselves if we if we were to say yeah, we used to we used to have control, but we gave it gave it all up to God. Oh, we yeah. did give it all up to God, but we didn't have um, control. Yeah. We were being deceived. That's my yes, rant. Sir. That's good. That's a okay. good rant. I'm glad. Um yeah, so what the things I have are very similar to what you said. Idolatry can be immediately satisfying. Mm. Or um, not not just not only does it give you a quick fix, but it can also keep your attention. Yeah, it's not boring, right? You can you can usually dive so deep into something that even if you see it destroying your life, you'll stay with it because it has your attention and it's entertaining. Yeah, like it it doesn't end. It's something you're not going to be bored with it. I'm talking in circles now. But I think that's it's a big thing too. Mm-hmm. It's how captivating it is. Um another thing I wanted to talk about that you alluded to was that I think one of the biggest reasons idolatry is so appealing is because it is very very communal. Mhm. It is um, everything has the potential to be communal. Yeah. And I, I think about at the the retreat we went to last semester, Shane Wood said that sin is communal. Mm-hmm. And um, if you're if you're someone who's lonely and has never had a community before, and then you you have this idol in the place of God, and you find out there's a community behind that, you're you're diving all in. Yeah. And you're you're willing to get invested in that because there are other people who are invested in that. And it can keep all of you entertained. And it can sustain your friendship, but it won't sustain it for very long. Right. Because either that idol will fall away and your friendship will be ruined, or someone will just lose interest. And then if that's the only thing you had to hold on to, it's not it's not coming back. Yeah. That's I think of some people who have made uh, sex their idol, and then when they become a Christian, they they have to tell their girlfriend or boyfriend, we have to stop having sex. And then once they stop having sex, they end up breaking up. Yeah. Because they found out that this idol was all that was keeping them together, and so by exposing that idol and keeping it at bay, they were able to see something and act on act on a separation that really helped themselves in the long run. Because it was either it happened then or it happened when they were 50 years old right. and the, the sex wasn't as good as it used to be. And so exposing these things at a young age and as early as you can, even if it affects your community and affects your friendships, is for the best. Because if you and your friend, the only thing you're bonding over is an idol... It's it's not a friendship that's right. worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Another good rant. Awesome. Did you have any thoughts? No. That was good. Okay. Well said. <laughs> All right. So the, the the next thing, the next question is why should we flee from idolatry? 
we've kind of already yeah. said it. <laughs> but let's say it again. Cause there's no nothing for you there. Right. For one, there's a few different reasons. There's it's not going to fulfill you. And, and arguably a more serious reason to okay. run from idols. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> that was Where probably is really it? Really loud in the mic. It's all right. Oh, do I not have a verse on this? Uh, well, let's read this verse from Exodus 20. Okay, good. This is one of the old, the good old Ten Commandments. Mm. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness or anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or is in the water under the earth. An idol. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. Yeah. Yeah. God really doesn't like it when we choose to worship something else. And that's not like... We shouldn't take that lightly. Like, I don't know. I just, I read that and I kind of thought jealous was kind of like, we could look over that. But he's, like, if you think about a time you've been jealous, that, oh, it's awful. I hate yeah. being jealous. So, so imagine, I, imagine causing God to feel jealousy for you. Oh. That's sad to me. Yeah. And, ah, oh, there's, there's got to be a verse in there somewhere, but I don't <laughs> have it in my notes. Do you remember what it is about? Is it about idolatry? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's about God's wrath and that that those that worship Satan, maybe not, I don't know, serve Satan. You you don't have to know Satan to worship him. Yeah. And you don't have to think you're worshiping Satan to worship him. And if that sounds extreme, that's because it is. Yeah. So we were talking about you're either 100% in or 100% out. And if you are not serving God... You're hundred percent out, and God's wrath is on your head. Yeah, yeah. That's not to be taken lightly either. He is a judge and a jealous God. Right, and this is, and just to remind you guys, this is all in response to why should we flee yeah. from idolatry. We can we can talk a lot about God's wrath and about his judgment. Mm-hmm. But I think it's it's almost worth it to talk more about how it doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> like well, to, to worship idols. <laughs> God's judgment and wrath makes sense. No, to worship yeah, yeah. idols doesn't make sense when you think about why you would rather do that instead of worship the God in the Bible. Yes. When you read the Bible and and read about all these qualities of God and character traits of God and the amazing things that he's done for us, regardless of our situation in life, Mm -hmm. and you'd rather choose to worship something that has no thought. Yeah, a created thing. Yeah, which is forbidden. Forbidden. And I want to try to combine two of the things you said. God outlaws this and forbids this because it doesn't make sense. Right. He knows that. Yeah. He's not like, he's not saying, don't do this because I don't want you to have any fun. He's saying, don't do this because this thing that can't speak doesn't love you. Yeah. It can't provide for you. This thing that you're so infatuated with will eventually let you down and is spi- it's leading you into a downward spiral. Mm-hmm. And so he's saying, I am a jealous God. I love you. The fact that he's jealous shows that he actually cares about us because your idols aren't going to be jealous. Right. They don't care. Yeah. You, you turn away from your idol, no jealousy, because the thing doesn't care about you. Mm-hmm. The... 
the movies don't care about you. The video games don't care about you. The sports team doesn't care about you. But the fact that moving away from God causes him jealousy is because there is a tremendous amount of love that he just wants to give you. Yeah, a tremendous desire to be in a relationship with you. Yeah. As a father. Like, if, if you were a parent and you desperately wanted nothing but to love your child and they desperately wanted anything but your love, Mm-hmm. that's going to be terrible. That's going to be heartbreaking. Yeah. I, I think a lot, if not all of the, like the, the hard laws in the Bible are not, like you said, to forbid us from having fun, but to keep us out of destroying ourselves because we're yeah. so prone to destroying things. Yeah. As sinful human beings. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, God's commands are logical commands. Yeah. Like you, you can you can think about them and process process them in a logical way. Why did God say this? There are reasons. Maybe yeah. you won't fully understand them, but there are probably some things that you can observe from the two ends of the spectrum, and notice differences. And see why God's way right. works. To protect you. To protect you. Probably. More often than not, I imagine. Yeah, to, <laughs> to protect your heart. Yeah, God's not going to, to... What's the word I'm looking for? He's not going to encourage you to do something that's going to hurt you. Mm-hmm. You might think it hurts on this side of things like you might be going through some painful stuff (laughs) right but yeah his laws are there for your good and for your protection right and for your um oh what's the word i don't i have no idea uh for your he came to bring life to the fullest abundance abundance yes it's it's for his laws are there so you can live the most joy filled life yeah. you can. And guess what? You are gonna miss out on some things. Yeah. You're gonna miss out on some super exciting things. But things that will take whatever good you have in your soul and just rip it out. Say, Oh, we don't need that there. It yeah. doesn't matter. And then you'll become numb. And then you'll be a, a functioning carcass. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. Spiritually dead. Yeah. There is, so God does not want that. Yeah. He knows what gives us life. And then when, when you follow and obey him, you get this deeper thing called joy, which we've touched on before, which is you can think of it differently than happiness, where it's this consistent feeling of security and consistent mm-hmm. feeling of joy and it's not going to abandon you. Yeah. And that's what God offers. Stuff that actually lasts. Man, I'm really feeling it right <laughs> now. And I I, I want to I feel like I want to say that I don't want to make it sound like I have these things down. Oh yeah. Pat, because I still struggle with idolatry in my life. Right. Social media still grips my heart too tightly at times. And other things are more exciting to me than the Lord at times. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, go ahead. No, yeah. Like, we've said this, I feel like, many times before <laughs> on the podcast, that this is not the flip of a switch sort of thing. Yes. It is sanctification. It is a lifetime of growing. Yeah. We actually have quite a bit more... Th- to touch let's on. Let's do it. So let, let's get going. The The last thing I wanted to say about why should we flee from idolatry? Someone might wonder, why should you flee from exciting things to go to something boring? <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> Some fair. people see Christianity as boring. Yeah. They see God as boring. I used to think that, you know? So why would you abandon 
excitement for something tedious. And um, the, the truth is you get excitement and joy from what you invest in. Mm-hmm. So don't think that just because this isn't a super fun adventure, that, that pursuing God isn't this incredible adventure, don't let that deter you from pursuing him because you may have just started yeah. and you may have not invested in Christ nearly as much as you've invested in something else because whatever your idol is, you didn't, you probably didn't wake up in the morning and all of a sudden feel so excited right. and so, so happy from it. You invested in that idol. When, when I say the MCU was an idol for me, it's because through comic books and through video games and other movies, I was investing in superheroes my whole life. And so I didn't, that's why I don't wake up one morning and think, man, Harry Potter is just so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I never watched that. So you are going to get excitement and joy from what you invest in. And so don't think that just because this, this Christian life is boring right now means that it's not worth it. It means you haven't given it the time. Mm-hmm. Because it is very exciting. Oh, yeah. It's very rewarding. And the community, the just the presence of the Holy Spirit is, oh, I'm not going back. No. Yeah. So in, invest in Christ and stop investing in idols. Yep. First Thessalonians 1, 9, and 10, you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. It's a good one. Yeah. We turn from the dead, useless, little g gods. Right. See, you are a, a functioning carcass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To serve the living and true God who can hear us and does hear us. Yes. Cuz that that's the 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 black and white part of this is life and death. Right. The idols are being run by well, if you let it, they're being run by someone who actually wants to kill you. Yeah. And the the cross Christ is being led by someone who wants you to live mm-hmm. there there are two different intentions from these two leaders and they are trying to fulfill their intention right um in this lifetime you know and so that's why the mission of Christ is urgent cuz you need that life mm-hmm. now you don't know how Ra- how much life you got here that's right. Yeah. Darn right. We read from Psalm 115 earlier about those who make idols will be like idols, and so will all who trust in them. That chapter, that psalm goes on to, to tell you something very simple but very important in the end of verse 9, the verse right after where we stopped earlier. The end of it is to, it says, trust in the Lord. He is your help and your shield. Other translations say your help and your salvation. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I like. More contrast between the dead and the living. Mm -hmm. That's good. Those are some good verses. Yep. Did you have anything else? I think that's all I got. Okay. Let me let me just run through these last few things. <laughs> like that? <laughs> yeah. All right. Like that. Galatians 5, 19 through 21 says, The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So why should we flee from idolatry? Another reason is 
you won't see the kingdom of God. Yeah. That's a big bummer. Because, yeah, you're not serving the God with a kingdom. Yeah. That's it, right. If you find any of those things in that list you just read to be immoral, idolatry is in that list. Right? Mm-hmm. We should we should be viewing idolatry in the same light as these other things. Yeah. Yeah. I think um I think when people hear idolatry, it does have a negative connotation to it. And I think what's important is exposing what things are idolatry. And so the fact that idolatry is in this list, and if you feel like anything is in your, in your life is that, then it's in the list. Yeah. It's got to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so idolatry leads you into a trap. You don't really have that much control. And the, the one running the trap wants you dead. And you will, you will miss out on the things of the Spirit, including the fruits of the Spirit. And you're missing out on freedom. And then there's this, this uh, rapper named Sho Baraka, and he's really, really good. Uh, he has this one lyric that I really like. He says, you are only worth the value of the idol you bow down to. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Your value is meant to be given to you by God. Right. These other things can't give you value. Man. Not e- y- go ahead. I was just going to just finish your thought first. Not even other people can give you your value. Right. They they can give you value but not proper value. Because humans are very valuable. Yeah. The soul is so precious. It's something that God cares so much about. And these these things that are created things many of them created by god there's a reason they can't give you that value they just aren't capable Mm -hmm. but god is and he is the only one who is which also goes to show how valuable you are that the only one who can show your value is the infinite god of the universe that's what i was gonna say i I was was just gonna comment on, (laughs) on the extreme extreme value of you under God. Yes. Yeah. Very valuable. Yeah. Too valuable for idolatry. Um, well, yeah. Yeah, so to serve an idol is to undermine your own value. Your soul yeah. is meant to be handled by the one who made it, not by something who didn't make it. If you, uh, <laughs> um, he know he made it. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Have you ever made something, and then someone else picked it up and didn't know what to do with it, and you just were like so nervous, like, oh my gosh, please don't break. break. <laughs> I'm thinking about like arts and crafts. Yeah. In Sunday school, look at this thing I made, and then your little brother comes up, picks it up, and you're like, oh, <laughs> dude, you didn't make that. You don't know how that works yeah it's because he didn't make it or even just like i think about little little things little like trinkets or something that might hold like memories for a person like oh yeah i got that thing at this one place with these one people and to another person it means nothing right yeah yep and that that goes back to the well the the analogy is obvious like the one that it means nothing to is the idol. Yeah. And so to think that you have value there just isn't true. Mm. You have value somewhere else. Like if if one of your best friends comes up to you and starts like telling telling you all the stuff they love about you, that's going to mean something to you. Mm. Way more than like if a random stranger was like, nice glasses. Yeah. Which is a crude example of like, man, I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, the the friend is your A1 day one. Yeah. So it means something. And even if you don't know God, God knows you. 
better than anyone else does. And so he wants to be the one to give you that. Yeah. Not not something else. And he should be the one to receive that from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else? Yep. Here we go. Um, by giving... These are such big <laughs> points. By by giving into idolatry, you're actually lessening your humanity. Mm-hmm. To to sin is well, people are like, oh, of course you're gonna sin, you're only human. But in reality, to sin is to make yourself less yeah. than human. It's not what we were created for, hence why it hurts. Yeah. Right? It hurts because it's not how things were supposed to be. And so to give into idolatry does not make you independent, does not make you strong, and does not make you human. It makes you weak. Uh, I feel like I'm being very blunt, but it makes you it makes you weak. It means you lack self-control, and it means that you are going against what humanity is intended for. Mm-hmm. So it's true. That's that. Um. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there, there's a, idolatry has a, an aura of, this is okay, everyone's doing this, and you're not cool if you don't do this, or you're, you're scared if you don't do this, or you're weak if you don't do this, when in reality, you're weak if you give in, you're weak if you give in, the strength, the strength comes when you resist things like that, and, uh, we're all pretty weak without yes. the strength that comes from God. Exactly. So that's why Holy Spirit is very helpful. He helps us. <sighs> Last. Last thing. Couple things. Couple things. So here, here are just some basic questions to help someone recognize if they oh. are falling into idolatry. Mm-hmm. These are basic questions to help you recognize if something in your life is becoming an idol yeah. because it's very sneaky. It can be very, very sneaky. I remember when this was first brought up to me, I was like, no way that's an idol for me. And then I really thought about it and I was like, can't see how it's not, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. So these were questions that we got from our His House worship night last week and I thought they were really good so I wrote them down and I want to share them so it it describes idolatry it's when anything takes the rightful place of God and another thing that's interesting is that it's not that other things become too big it's not that the idols become too big it's that God becomes too small Mm -hmm. and um, that is a very simple way to put a complex issue but you minimize God and so naturally, these other things come into devour. But anyways, the questions are, number one, um, how, do you, how do you know when an idol is forming in your heart? Number one, do you become angry when confronted about your involvement with blank? Number two, does your community center on God or blank? Hmm. Number three, do you spend most of your discretionary time and money on blank? Are your relationships suffering because of blank? Do you find yourself dispassionate about prayer, scripture, fasting, evangelism, and missions while feeling very excited about blank instead? When you think about your identity, do you immediately think of blank? Is blank shaping your character instead of God? These are all questions I think we should ask ourselves almost on a daily basis to see if anything in our life is taking us away from God and taking us from what he has intended intended and wants for us. Mm-hmm. Anything Sweet. else? No. All right. What did you learn this week? Ooh, I learned a lot about idolatry, mm. but what I really learned, well, I really learned about idolatry. What I also nice. really learned was about 
how how do I word this? Um, I learned a lot about, um, okay, I got it. Okay. Um, someone told me, I think it was Michaela, my girlfriend. Okay. If it wasn't, that's awkward. (laughs) But she, she said she learned at church on Sunday how often... Do we quit praying for things because nothing happens, so we just give up mm-hmm. instead of being persistent and actually like putting in more than a day's worth of effort into a yeah. prayer request? Like, it, I I was just thinking throughout the week how like how monumental our prayers could be if we actually just stuck to praying for them. Or mm. praying about these things. Because I know in my life, at least, I've been very bad at, like, actually praying for the thing I am concerned about for more than, you know, one or two prayers. Right. It just, it just I forget or whatever. Yeah. What What would happen if I actually prayed about those things until, you know, I got an answer? Right? Mm-hmm. So I learned a lot about being committed to the things you're praying for and not praying like in vain, I guess, or empty prayers, Mm -hmm. but actually like genuinely being concerned and being like pouring your heart into the prayers you're praying. Yeah. Because they're important and they can, they can do important things. In the world. Yeah, that's really good. What did you learn? Persistence. I le- I felt like I learned a variety of things, but mainly that obeying God is really nice. <laughs> 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 it it uh gives me a lot of peace. And um, the journey to taking certain steps in faith can be very, very rocky. Yeah. But when when you finally gain consistency in certain areas that have been issues in your heart for a long time, it it just it feels so good. It feels so peaceful, and um, I just really feel the peace of God. I felt it a lot this past week um, because the things that he has been working on, to his credit, by the way, are are starting to take place. And it's, it's cool. Sweet. Yeah. Well, this has been another episode of The Bottom Line where life's inconsistencies are met with foundational... Foundational truth. Truth. You can catch us here every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Um, yeah, if you ever have any questions, you can reach out to Jake and me through our Instagram, and the accounts will be linked in the description below. And um, that that's about it. Yep. So we'll see you guys here next time. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe to stay updated on these weekly episodes, and we'll see you next Thursday. See you later.